Welcome to the MLS Roundtable series presented by Target. This will be the third and final installment of our discussion on youth development in and around MLS, and it will focus on the future. Tab, you've seen the game grow so much over the years, in the last 10 years, particularly leading up to this U20 successful campaign. What do you think the next steps are for the national team, specifically as far as developing young talent? Well, we're not in general developing talent. Okay. So obviously we're accelerating the talent of the players after they come from their clubs. Um, I think when we identify problems nationwide, I think as Lucci mentioned before, I think something that's really important is to begin to identify talent earlier. You know, MLS clubs are finding themselves in a really difficult spot when the players are turning 15, 16 years old because now they're finding themselves that MLS has gotten so, gotten so much better and the facilities are so much better that now the competition for MLS is the world. And so everyone from around the world is looking for the players that are domestic players, our American players. And so MLS clubs find themselves in that peculiar position of having to decide, are we betting on this player at 15 and 16 years old? And so I think, I think that the earlier we can identify the players, the easier it's going to be for MLS clubs to work with them for a period of time and make those early decisions. And so I think those, those couple of things are things that we have to focus on. But I think what's important is that the good news is we're competitive worldwide now with our young players. And the bad news is that everybody wants our young players because of that. You guys are the success stories, right, Tyler? basically zoomed through the academy system into the first team. Same with you, uh, Justin. For some of your teammates that maybe haven't had that luck or skill or uh, good fortune, whatever you want to call it, drive, all those things play a part of it, but it's a special formula. What do you think are some of the challenges that maybe have held some of your teammates back that might still make it down the road? I think uh, a thing that comes to mind is the two kids that went to the academy before I did um, and then asked me to try out with them. Um, both superb players, um, maybe better than me, but they just didn't have, again, they didn't have the money or they didn't have the good fortune. Uh, they had scholarships at the academy, but maybe they didn't play well enough on that day to, to catch a coach's eye. I think it's crazy to see that from the point where I joined the academy to signing my first professional contract how many players get lost in the mix. And I think there's way too many players like that, whether it's you know, not giving the opportunity to play, um, like Justin said, bad fortune of you know, not being able to make the drive or the commitment um, all the way. Um, I think for me, I was given an opportunity at a young age and, and I was able to you know, take that and ride with it. And, and fortunately enough, with, on one opportunity, I am where I am now. Um, but for some players, if they never get that opportunity, how are they supposed to, you know, make it? And for, for Red Bulls, it's a, it's a free club. So when I had that, that opportunity to go there right away, it's a, it's a no-brainer. You know, I'm going to take the opportunity and I'm going to put all I have into it and, and hopefully make it uh, to where I'm making money one day and making a living off of it. Um, but for the players that don't have that opportunity and never get that opportunity, you know, we have to find the right way and, and to develop them. Your sporting director, Dennis Hamlet, was my old coach with the fire, and he gave me a hard time coming up. You know, he, he was pretty tough on me, and one of the things he told me talking to him uh, about you was your toughness. Where does that come from, and is that maybe a missing piece here as far as youth development goes, where, frankly, some guys have it based on whatever it is, and some guys don't, regardless of the circumstances? Yeah, I think since I was younger, it was kind of just from my parents, a mentality type of thing. I mean, you, you know, you either make it on your own or you don't really make it. You have to make a living for yourself somehow, whether that's in the real world, um, going to school, no matter what you're doing, you have to you know, work for what you're, what you're gonna earn. Um, and for me, when I joined the academy, I knew that from stepping on that, that field the first day, whether it was, I think it was Rutgers, Newark, not even, we didn't even have our training facility yet at the time. Um, it, it was a battle for you know, playing time on the academy to, to one day wanting to earn that first professional contract. And you know, you, what they said when I first got there was like one in you know, however many players from each team make, make it to the professional ranks. Um, and I wanted to be that, that one player more than anything. And I think I see now my brother in the academy as well, and he wants to work towards the same thing. And I told him you know, my experiences and, and how, how hard I worked to, to earn it. And I think that just giving younger kids that mentality of working for what you want to earn is the best thing you can do. I mean, I remember going through the draft process myself. I didn't have a single player interview from any MLS team. I, you know, I was one of the higher picks. Lucci, now you guys go into and get into a little bit of the psyche the, to figure out what a guy like Tyler, a guy like Justin is at a young age, get to know his family. What's that process like for you guys as far as understanding 
the people that are our players for you guys? In my experience, the ones that, that find success at the highest level, at the foundation of their criteria, it's mental strength. It's a fortitude, it's a resilience. There's a, I think you, you mentioned commitment and drive. And they've dealt with adversity. They've dealt with not making a, a roster at the first team level. Uh, I can cite to Victor Oyo at FC Dallas, almost went two years, signed from our academy, homegrown player, almost went two years without first team minutes. You know, was playing a lot of inner squads, a lot of training, would come down and train with the academy. And he never gave up. He never gave up. He was always ready. He was always ready just for that one opportunity. And when he finally got it, you know, he took advantage. And now he's a, he's a, he's a mainstay. He's a, he doesn't start every game, but he plays a lot and plays significantly. He's a big part of our club at the first team level. So, you know, the mental strength to me is at the foundation of all the criteria. You talk about athleticism, you know, coordination, balance, speed, endurance, obviously very important. If you don't have that, you don't, you don't make it. But I would say it's maybe the fifth least important because you got mental strength, which is the foundation, technical aptitude, um, decision making, leadership, personality, obviously important, and athleticism. But the foundation is mental strength, like these guys have, have, have uh, cited to. You know, fortunately, here on the show, I don't know if you selected by mental toughness, because these are probably the two toughest guys uh, you're going to get. And Tyler is the only player, and I've been coaching the national team now for six years as a head coach, and probably eight or nine years that's at least assistant with national teams. And obviously I went to the World Cup with, with Jurgen Klinsmann. For the, and I don't think I've ever seen a player yell at himself in practice. And he's that guy. He's, he's like, he's so tough on himself. So he kind of takes it to the next level. But I mean, these are both great guys and we were lucky with that group, but that's kind of that's how it works. At the end, it has, to be, it has to come from the heart, has to be a belief, and everything else has to be on the outside. Well, I've been really lucky with this group today, so I want to thank you, you each, Tab, Justin, Tyler, and Lucci for spending time with us and really sharing a lot of the challenges, opportunities, and progress that we've made so far in youth development. And we also need to say a big thank you to our audience, of course, for joining us for this MLS roundtable, and a big thank you to Target as well for making this all possible. Remember, guys, back to school shopping is upon us, so make sure to go to your local Target to check it out. Thanks again. Mm.